After accidentally gaining superhuman strength, a street-level criminal must choose between using it for his nefarious activities or to help save humanity. With a stolen watch, Enzo Ciccotti runs away from the cops chasing him. They pass a group of activists protesting against the recent terror strikes in Rome. To avoid being captured, he jumps and hides in the Tiber River, utterly unaware of the radioactive waste barrels beneath the water. After realizing the cops have left, he attempts to climb out of the water, but one of the barrels he's hopping on breaks submerging him in the toxic chemical. When the man returns home, he spends the entire night feeling sick and throwing up an oily substance he accidentally swallowed. The following morning, he wakes up as if nothing happened and continues his day looking for his neighbor Sergio to sell the stolen watch. Inside the office where Sergio works as a gang member, Pinocchio, one of their members, confronts their leader Fabio, also known as Zingaro, over his hasty decision to associate with the Neapolitans. Even Zingaro's brother, Rika, agrees with the man chastising his brother for not alerting them of his actions. While Zingaro justifies his decision, another member, Sperma, enters, bringing him his new phone. The leader berates the man for purchasing a white phone rather than a black phone that he prefers. In the middle of their discussion, Pinocchio abruptly stands to leave and carry out the gang's initial plan to rob an armored truck without their help. However, he fails to leave the place when Zingaro strikes his head with the brand new phone. Once Sergio steps outside, Enzo offers him the stolen watch. Before he walks away, Sergio persuades the thief to accompany him on a mission. Later, Sergio welcomes Enzo into his home to gather the things they'll need for the mission to extract the drugs that Zingaro has ordered from the Neapolitans. As Sergio searches for the laxatives, his psychologically disturbed daughter, Alessia, emerges from her room with her DVD player. She tells Enzo about the characters in her favorite anime, Steel Jig, innocently linking it to the real world. Later on the way to their mission, Sergio apologizes for his daughter's conduct, explaining how she grew mentally unstable after her mother's death. The father continues to explain his daughter's boundaries, such as touching her DVD will prompt her to hit her head against the wall. Upon arriving near the airport, they park the car and wait for the drugs. When the substance mules knock on the window, Sergio instructs them to get inside. Despite one of the guys insisting on taking his brother to the hospital, Sergio still drives to an abandoned building where they'll carry out the substance extraction. Once they reach the top floor, which is the only spot with water, Sergio instructs Enzo on how to operate the removal of drugs inside the mule's bodies. Shortly after, one of the substance mules dies from overdosing the drugs inside his body. Sergio decides to open the body, but the other smuggler continues to speak in a foreign language, blaming him. Moments later, Sergio's phone receives a call from Sperma. When he answers, the smuggler grabs his gun and fires at him. Before dying, Sergio manages to bash the man's head against the wall. Both fall to the ground, and when the man sees Enzo standing, the smuggler shoots him as well. Getting shot in his shoulder, Enzo falls from the top of the building and unexpectedly survives the fall. When the night comes, Zingaro performs at Nunzia's birthday celebration, the leader of the criminal organization with which he partnered with. While he performs, Rika receives a call from Sperma informing them that Sergio is nowhere to be found. After Zingaro's performance, his brother shares this update with him. Before they can discuss the matter, Antonio, Nunzia's right-hand man, interferes and introduces Zingaro to their leader. However, the mafia boss who doesn't look amused inquires about the delivery, to which Zingaro replies that everything went well. Waiting for her father, Alessia keeps bothering Enzo after seeing the man return home all by himself. Throughout the night, Alessia continues bugging the man. Unable to contain his annoyance, Enzo rushes to his door and startlingly punches a hole in it. Both of them are taken aback. The woman frightfully runs away while Enzo goes on to test his power out of curiosity. He easily moves his appliances and figures he now has superhuman strength. Later that night, upon learning his newfound ability, Enzo steals an ATM. He wears a mask over his face to keep his identity hidden from the surveillance cameras. The next day, after bringing the whole machine, his place is entirely covered by the money he stole. He then goes on to check his gunshot wound, which has magically healed overnight. After hearing Alessia scream, Enzo walks outside to find her interrogated by her father's gang regarding her father's whereabouts. Truthfully, she admits that she has no idea where her father is and speculates that the fictional animated characters might have abducted him. Enzo silently heads downstairs and signals the girl to stay silent. Intentionally, he stops a few meters away from them to light his cigarette. The men notice him overhearing their private conversation, so Zingaro punches him to go out. Then, the gang searches Alessia's place for the drug Sergio was supposed to deliver. When one of the men touches Alessia's DVD player, she loses her mind and scratches Zingaro's face. Furious, the man grabs a knife to intimidate the lady into revealing where her father is. Fortunately, Enzo jumps through the window wearing his hood and mask, catching everyone off guard. As the biggest in the group, Tatsu 
comes forward arrogantly to challenge the masked man. Everyone is in shock when the man effortlessly carries and knocks Tatsi down. Zingaro then points the knife at Alicia while the rest of the men attacking Enzo fail to knock him. While holding Rika, Enzo commands the gang leader to let go of Alicia. Zingaro accepts on the condition that he first let go of his brother. To get loose from Zingaro, Alicia elbows the man, causing him to fall to the ground. Before running away, he strikes the knife on Enzo's foot, cutting his toe. Preparing to leave, Alicia misidentifies Enzo as her favorite animated superhero, Steel Jeek. After a moment, Enzo reveals his identity to her, and the girl joyously exclaims that she knew that he's secretly Hiroshi Shiba, who can transform into Steel Jeek. Upon entering Enzo's room, Alicia giggles, noticing the ATM, and says that Enzo's mission as a superhero is to save humanity rather than stealing. Trying to reattach his toe, the man claims he isn't saving anyone because he can't stand people and is a friend to no one. Alessia continues to knit and notes that he needs better shoes when he turns into Steel Jeek. She then asks if his wound hurts, but the man abruptly cuts her off, irritated. On the other hand, Alessia continues to tease him, inquiring whether he's upset because of Minister Mimashi. The lady reveals that Minister Mimashi is her real-life psychiatrist who abuses her and other patients by photographing them unclothed. After hearing this, Enzo halts for a moment, then instructs Alicia not to stare while he changes clothes. However, Alicia glances back, reminding him to save her father before the fictitious Day of Darkness happens. Instead of engaging with the girl's imaginary world, he informs her that she must stay in his place since it's dangerous for her to be alone. Later that night, while Alicia sleeps, Enzo gets up to smoke. He pulls Sergio's red eyeglass case from his jacket and he finds a map detailing the route of the truck that Zingaro's group plans to rob. The following day, Enzo awakens to Alicia watching adult videotapes. Enraged by the girl meddling with his belongings, he instantly shuts it off. He checks on his wounded foot to find his toe still disjoined. Later that morning, Enzo brings Alicia to the group home, where she's usually taken whenever her father is in jail. To persuade the girl to stay, the man promises to find her father and fulfill her request for a princess dress. Meanwhile, in a forest, Rika converses with a guy while Zingaro and his men stay inside the car, watching and admiring Enzo's viral footage of stealing an ATM. Then, Rika enters the car, interrupting the men's conversation to inform them of the route of the truck they intend to rob. Zingaro shows his brother the viral video, wishing their squad to have a member as rigid as the masked man. Afraid of humiliating himself, Zingaro disagrees with telling the Neapolitans what happened with the illicit substance extraction. Moments later, when they walk into their office, Nunzia's men are already waiting for them, revealing they have discovered Sergio's dead body. Furiously, Zingaro tells them they must investigate what happened with the shipment. On the other hand, the men are unconcerned about the shipment. They only come to inform them that all they care about is the payment. Zingaro pledges to pay the money tomorrow night, and the men depart, holding on to this promise. Meanwhile, Enzo is also analyzing the route of the armored truck Zingaro's gang's about to rob. Then, he turns on the TV to find himself enjoying the Steel Jig show that Alessia loves. Later that day, Zingaro's gang is ready to wait for the truck they intend to loot. However, when they spot the approaching truck, they notice Enzo on an overpass, hurling stones at it, preceding them from getting the money. To express his infuriation at Enzo's sudden entrance, Zingaro guns the man but fails to hit him. Hours later, Enzo has purchased the entire set of Steel Jig anime. As he prepares to watch the show, his doorbell rings, and to his surprise, police officers bring Alessia with them after they find her strolling alone. When the officers leave, Enzo reprimands Alessia for bringing cops into his place. Unbothered by his anger, Alessia proudly presents him with the finished knitted headpiece and reminds Enzo to wear it whenever he transforms. Spotting the Steel Jig's box set, Alessia requests for them to watch the show. While watching, Alessia holds Enzo's hand, which the man interprets as a different signal for intimacy. Alessia is terrified as the man tries to sit closer to her, recollecting the carnal assault she has endured. She starts smashing her head against the wall so Enzo calms her, vowing to help her find Sergio. The next day, Enzo brings Alessia to a circus, and the girl recalls her childhood memories when her parents still loved each other. She once again asks Enzo where her dad is, but the man still denies knowing anything. In Zingaro's office, the leader walks in and finds Rika going to meet Nunzia to rectify the mess he has made. Enraged, Zingaro commands Tatsi to release their dogs and let them attack his brother. Concurrently in a mall, Alessia finds her princess gown. She invites Enzo to the dressing room to show how it looks, and they begin making out. Shortly after, Alessia tears up, appearing to relive the assault she had experienced. After exiting the mall, Alessia sulks and reminds Enzo of his responsibility to save her father. When Enzo discloses what truly happened to her father, Alessia becomes wrathful, arguing that he doesn't really care about anyone, including her. Simultaneously, Zingaro watches Enzo's viral video and the newscast to follow the latest news regarding the masked man. Pissed, he tells Tatsi 
Nazi to call Marcelone as his last resort for getting money to recompense Nunzia. At the same time, when Alicia boards a bus, Enzo stops it with his bare arms and enters to apologize to her. He assures the lady that he cares for her and promises to bring her to her father. Alicia acknowledges his apologies and advises him to wear a mask next time because everyone is now filming him. Elsewhere, Zingaro eventually receives a loan from Marcelone. However, Nunzia and her minions arrive and nonetheless shoot Marcelone despite Zingaro's assurance that he has the money. Right after, Nunzia threatens to burn Zingaro alive, and when he starts to cry, the group laughs, implying that they're merely joking. On the other hand, Marcelone, whom they assume is dead, rises and begins shooting Nunzia's men. The leader is the only one who escapes the shootout with one leg getting shot. Afterward, Zingaro kills Marcelone for obliviously causing greater problems. Meanwhile, Alessia and Enzo visit Sergio's body, and the emotional daughter bids her father farewell by referring to him as Minister Amaso. Later that evening, Zingaro gets home and discovers both his men and dogs were killed. On the news, Enzo's identity is finally revealed to the public as the superpowered criminal. Then, Tatsi appears and informs Zingaro that Nunzia and his men have murdered their buddies. For their safety, Enzo and Alicia leave their apartment, but Zingaro and Tatsi have already set their eyes on them. Inside a motel, Enzo talks about his tragic life growing up. The young woman appreciates him opening up and is able to sleep without her DVDs, due to Enzo's presence. As Alessia sleeps, the telephone rings with no one answering on the other line. Suddenly, Zingaro storms into their room and shoots Enzo, causing him to feel disoriented. With Enzo's body plastered in duct tape, Zingaro defines to the man his desire for respect and fame. He continues by imagining blowing up the parliament or the Olympic Stadium during the Roma Lazio game. So he questions Enzo about where he got his power. At first, Enzo hesitates, but eventually reveals in order to keep Alicia unharmed. Enzo brings Zingaro to the Tiber River, explaining how he obtained power from a barrel beneath the water. Suspicious, Zingaro orders him to jump and grab the barrels he's talking about. Meanwhile, Alicia warns Tatsi that she'll urinate inside the vehicle if he refuses to let her out. Rather than granting Alicia's request, Tatsi maniacally approaches the lady to tug her dress. The man touches her, so the woman reaches for her knitting needle and stabs Tatsi's neck, killing him. At the same time, when Nunzia's criminal group arrives and starts firing on Zingaro, Alicia runs out, yelling that Enzo must not give Zingaro his power. Consequently, Zingaro holds Alessia as his hostage, but the group remains unfazed and continues shooting. Enzo dashes towards Alicia when she gets shot, while Nunzia proceeds to burn Zingaro, who then falls into the river. As a dying wish, Alicia asks Enzo to use his power to save humanity. The next day, the half-burned Zingaro emerges from the river, having gained equal power as Enzo. After preparing to appear decent despite being burnt, he surprises Nunzia in her mansion. He records himself with background music, then takes turns killing each of Nunzia's men and servants. He eventually gets to the leader, takes her hand, and dances to the music while strangling her tightly to death. Impressed by himself as he watches his recorded video, Zingaro spots the room where the bombs are stored. Meanwhile, Enzo mourns Alessia's death while walking in a field along the road when two cops recognize him. To identify if it's truly him, the cops cautiously drive backward. At the same time, a mother driving with her daughter avoids colliding with a police car, forcing the car to crash instead. The officers assist the mother, screaming that her daughter is still inside. When the car catches fire, Enzo sprints toward it to save the little girl. He manages to save her and the mother thanks him. Seeing the people's eyes on him, Enzo now fully comprehends what Alicia meant about the joy of helping people. Then, he sees footage of Zingaro on the TV, threatening the public with the greatest bombing he plans. He remembers the gang leader's psychotic dream of blowing up the Olympic Stadium. Realizing today's Roma Lazio game, Enzo borrows a motorcycle and introduces himself to the owner as Hiroshi Shiba. Concurrently, Zingaro, disguised as a homeless man, kills an ambulance driver to use the vehicle to infiltrate the stadium. Moments later, Enzo finds Zingaro cynically showing him the phone he'll use to trigger the explosives. With the same ability, the two superhumans begin battling each other, unaware that authorities are already watching and preparing to catch them. Zingaro runs toward the crowd watching the game and Enzo struggles to find him. Enzo manages to destroy the phone when he eventually catches the man, but the gang leader escapes again by jumping over the fence. Enzo jumps after Zingaro, who seems to manage to kill every cop waiting for him on the ground. In the meantime, Zingaro successfully modifies the bomb to explode in under 5 minutes. With no other option, Enzo drives the vehicle away from the public, who are gradually leaving the area. However, the cops forbid him from crossing the road despite yelling that there is a bomb inside. To divert their attention, he moves out and pushes the vehicle against the officers while he runs away carrying the bomb. He dashes forward as fast as he can to toss the bomb into the river. When he's about to throw the bomb, Zingaro bumps over him, causing the bomb 
bomb to fall on the bridge instead. As Zingaro runs to a dust exploding device further, Enzo catches him and dumps both of them into the river. Suddenly, the bomb explodes underwater, startling the cops and onlookers. Along with the explosion, Zingaro's head falls to the bridge, causing panic. Days after the incident, believing Enzo to be dead, the public is still debating whether he should be regarded as a hero. Unknown to them, Enzo is still alive, watching over the city, prepared to save humanity in the steel jig mask Alicia has made for him. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.